um, Nate's sleeping, so I just wanted to give you guys an update. So we left Sacramento at like noon yesterday. We had a dope time at Rally Youth Conference. Um, we're en route to Austin for WAVE Student Conference. And uh, our connection with Salt Lake City, bad weather. They redirect us to Boise, Idaho. And an uh, hour and a half flight turns into six hours. Obviously miss our connection. So we stay in Salt Lake City, get about four hours of sleep, and board the first flight out at 6 a.m. We're on this flight, and a coffee pot is leaking water. So we are 45 minutes delayed, because apparently that's how long it takes to get a roll of duct tape on a plane to fix the issue. Um, so we have about less than 10 minutes to make our connection in Houston so that we can land in Austin at 1 p.m. and have Nate on stage to close Wave Conference at 2 p.m. God willing. We'll see what happens. Satan is not omniscient, he doesn't know everything. He's not omnipotent, he's not all powerful, and he's not omnipresent, he's not everywhere. Right. Did you know that? <laughs> Satan probably doesn't know your name. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Sometimes people just do a lot of Christians are just yeah. like, yeah, Satan's been bothering me. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but don't flatter yourself, pal. <laughs> He's probably doing something really horrible somewhere in the world right now. I'm not saying that uh, that demonic oppression isn't real, right. Right. and that his his troops, his gang isn't organized. But what I'm saying is, is you know that, that, that that's sometimes we, we just love to blame blame God for stuff, blame anybody, devil for stuff, blame and never take responsibility. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. I don't think that, you know, so we got the word, we, we, we now we know the word, and we can resist the devil. You know, if the devil is personally attacking you, you can resist him, in Jesus' name. But number three, uh, one of the reasons why we've missed the investment opportunity is we know, but we don't have enough theological root to grasp the severity of the situation. That's great. The Greeks viewed heaven as an immaterial place. They believed that material was bad and spirit is good, and thus, you know, if you're in heaven and that's a good place, then it's not going to be a material place. That's just not the Christian vision at all. Okay, so the Christian vision all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, Psalms, Isaiah, Peter, and Revelation, is a new heavens and a new earth. And God's vision for the human project and the earth project is to keep it. God's not abandoning the human project or the earth project. He's just going to renew it and restore it. That's great. So, you know, we're not going to be naked angel babies floating on clouds. <laughs> I know, much to your disappointment. You know, <laughs> flying around, shooting each other in the rear end with a bow and arrow. God's world and our world are going to collide, right? God's, God is going to be in this world. Jesus is going to be back on earth and he's going to be the king. He's going to be running everything because that's, he's, that's, he's the boss. There's going to be no more elections, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Like heaven is not communist China, where everybody comes in and you're like, okay, you all get $25. Do you know what I'm saying? That's not how it works. Yeah, you get, you know, there's the grace of God by which we're saved and you can't earn it. You hear me, you just receive the grace of God. You receive your salvation by faith, but then there's gonna be some people who have a lot of wealth in heaven. That's what Jesus is saying. Don't try to be more holy than Jesus. If Jesus is saying build wealth, build wealth. If he's saying that there's wealth in heaven, build wealth in heaven. This is like a, a, a basic truth, but for whatever reason, my generation really struggles with it. Because it's like everybody, no, equality, equity, even, even. No, 
No, there's going to be people who they've, right, they have, they have not, they're, they're going to have rewards in heaven. There's different crowns in heaven. There's like five different crowns if you read the New Testament. Martyrs get a better crown. And just, just read your Bible. I know it's frustrating. <laughs> God's a bit of a capitalist that way. He's a rewarder. I know, it sucks. But this isn't fair. Mm. <laughs>
you know, a, an experience for people where they want to go and learn. They want to open up their laptop and jump in. They want to, you know, listen to the lectures. They want to do the readings. And it's not like this traditional education system where it's like, hey, only only 25% of your degree is really based on what you want to do. We're saying 100% of your degree is what you're called to and what you want. It's theology. So we're not doing all these gen eds and, you know, and fly fishing and all these other things that you're pouring money into just so you can graduate. Every single class is applicable to the ministry, applicable to theology. So I, I just love what we're doing and what we're building. I think one of the things that you, you mentioned about the gen eds is like, perhaps, you know, the philosophy behind higher education was that, you know, we were going to make you a round, a, a well-rounded individual, and that's why they're requiring all of these different gen eds, yeah. you know, and there's nothing, you know, wrong with that, um, you know, particularly in, in the humanities, you know, like, right. but problematically, the humanities departments and colleges and universities have become these activist breeding grounds, number one. Yeah. Number two, just totally and completely arbitrary. Um, you, you know, like the, 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 the scope of study and the scope of focus is like, you know, you pick something, you kind of have to, you kind of have to, you know, pick a place. Like even colleges, um, Bible colleges, you know, when they start teaching humanities, it's like they're drifting yeah. Uh, into progressivism, focusing in on what people are passionate about is not necessarily problematic. Um, like Sherlock Holmes, I remember, um, you know, he has these, he's a genius in some respects, but then there's some stuff that he just knows nothing about. And it's right. like, it's, it's like hilarious how dumb he is in certain areas. And I think that that's okay. I think it's okay to be a specialist. Right. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. and so that's kind of like what we're trying to, to create now. You know, oh, they'll never learn English. Well, actually, I think that they will by reading really great books and being forced to write. Yeah, 100%. Well, and, you know, and we're also exploring working with the universities. Like, we're not, no one is saying that the universities don't have a place in this world. 100%. All of our faculty, like you said, we, like we have a number of credentialed faculty with terminal degrees who are published scholars in different areas. Like, we 100% support that. Um, we're saying that, you know, for the pastor, leader, person out there saying, I want to grow in my theological education, we're removing the barriers and saying, we're going to make you a specialist in this area. If you want to take this and go to one of our universities that we're working with and then do your gen eds, get that credential, you know, do the academic side, go for it. Um, you know, but that specialist piece, absolutely. Well, you heard it first here in Texas, in Austin, Texas, with Scott Bullen. We're on our way to New York City. That should be fun as well. Hmm. <laughs> Sign up for Thales Seminary. It's $99 a month. Why wouldn't you? It's insane that you wouldn't. <laughs>